Good morning, everybody. Dr. Brescher and I are so happy to be together again. You were at ABC eight years? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. I, I said this morning it seemed like 20, but you know. Yes. Uh, yes. We're so happy to have Dr. Besser here today. And, and just talking about that career, yeah. I, I, I want to ask you first, really, you're a physician, obviously, why we call you Dr. B, at the CDC, and now at this huge philanthropic organization, right. Robert Wood Johnson. Right. What do you think you bring to this, and what, what do you want to do? Yeah, uh, it, that's a good question. It's wonderful to talk with you. <laughs> I, I, I miss our conversations. And uh, we were in, in I want to say that, that one of my most memorable things with you is in Haiti, after, yeah. after the earthquake together, and to watch you go around at night and, and helping people. Yeah. Um, pretty, pretty powerful. So, so um, this is, this is uh, the next chapter for me in my career, and, and my focus has been around public health, around trying to improve the health of people here and around the world, and I did that through traditional public health at the CDC, through governmental public health. Um, then I had that incredible opportunity at ABC to talk to people about health, to try and help shape the conversation around health and help people make more informed health, health decisions. Um, and um, it was an atypical move for someone in public health, but, but I truly believe that we need to do more to shape the conversation around health because there's so much misinformation, there's so much uh, noise out there that, that people don't know who to trust. And, and then this year, uh, five months ago, I got the opportunity to, to lead the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. I've never worked in philanthropy. But, but what I think, I mean, we're the largest philanthropy in the, in the U.S. focused on health. And we spend a lot of money to try and improve the health and well-being of, the, of, of those who are uh, most vulnerable. But I think there's a real opportunity for us to try and, and become one of those trusted nonpartisan voices, to try and shape the conversation that's going on in America and see how do we truly Im improve health and well-being. I think some of, the, some of what I learned at ABC in terms of how you talk about these issues um, will apply to what we do at the, at the foundation. And, uh, I've never been anywhere uh, where the mission clicked with me as much and where the passion for improving, improving health for the most vulnerable was, was so intense. I, I, I want to just uh, have a little more detail about that and, and being a journalist doctor and, and what you learned from that in particular about, about getting that message across. Yeah. Is it storytelling? Is it, is, it, is it making sure that people understand what you're doing? What, what I, is it that... I, I think storytelling is a big part of it. Uh, in public health, we're really good about talking statistics and showing graphs and, and uh, talking to other people in public health. Uh, at ABC, that got beat out of me with a stick. Uh, you know, I would propose these wonderful pie charts and, and, and graphs <laughs> and the producers would be shaking their head, like, absolutely not, and move to storytelling. Yeah, that's a great TV visual, a pie chart. <laughs> we, we love those. I yeah. love a pie chart, but, <laughs> but, I mean, a lot of this came real for me. I, I, I'm still a general pediatrician, and in New York, I worked in, in community clinics, and most of the, the children I would see were in foster care, and I know that for them to lead healthy lives, they have to eat right, they need to get exercise, they need to be supported in school. And every, every parent or guardian I saw wanted that for their children. But I knew that when I said, well, let's talk about breakfast, their, their ability to get healthy, healthy food for their child was, was pretty slim. The opportunity for their children to go outside and play was pretty slim. The safety in the streets wasn't there. And so there's this disconnect. And so at the foundation, we're, we're focused on building what we call a culture of health. And by that, we mean we want health to be the easy option. We want the, the, the society to be set up so that health is easy. It's easy to eat healthy food. It's easy to live in a house that's safe. Uh, it's easy to go outside and play. And that doesn't exist. And so for us, that means changing the conversation. Okay, Health, so let me yeah. say, easy to say, but yes. what do you do? Well, it, it, it means that we have to get the conversation away from thinking about health as just something that happens with you and your doctor. You know, w one statistic, only about 20% of premature mortality has anything to do with access to care. The rest of it is around all these other factors. Do you have a job that pays a living wage? If you don't have a job with a living wage, you're not going to have good benefits. You're not going to be able to do any of these other things. The stress in your life is going to be intense. Toxic stress is bad for your health. And you're going to die early. 
we need to be working with business, we need to be working with housing, with education, all these other sectors to pull them in to say, all right, how do we do this? How do we make it so that everyone has a fair and just opportunity for health? And, and on health care, obviously it has been obsessing Washington, D.C. and the country right now. How do you look at that? I mean, we are a divided nation on this. Yeah. I, you know, on Sunday tried to talk about health care. It is complicated. It is uh, partisan. So what do you do as this philanthropic organization with you at the head of it, with these skills you're bringing to it, to help people either understand yeah. it? What do you want to do and how, you do, how do you do it? I, I think there's a number of things that, that we need to do. Uh, one is, uh, is we need to use our voice. Uh, one of the things that's been important to us since our, 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 our beginning is making sure that everyone has access to affordable, high quality uh, health care. And, and that's not the case. We need to focus on the policy, not the politics. And we need, to, we need to provide a safe space for people from differing opinions to come together to work on, on solutions that are bipartisan. And we need to do what we can to, to bring down some of the, the, the heat around this issue. To us, uh, it's, it's, it's really not about what party is saying what. It's about making sure that everyone has access to these services that are critically important and improving what we have. And in this environment, how do you do that without seeming partisan? I know you put out a statement about Graham Cassidy. Right, right. So and I know it was about policy. Right. I know it was how you viewed it. But, but how do you do that it's, it's, in it's, this environment? It's a real challenge. I mean, a couple things. One is that we always focus on research. Uh, we're not going to be talking out where there isn't the evidence. So talking about what does it mean to somebody in terms of their health if they don't have, have affordable health care. And there's great data on that in terms of all kinds of different indicators. We always offer to work towards bipartisan solutions, and, and that's something that we did here. And, uh, and then we, we know that we're going to take some shots and some criticism, and that's not going to hold us off. We will bring people together. We will do what we can to de-escalate, and we will applaud efforts that move things forward. So, so when you looked at, Gra at Graham Cassidy, you look at it how? The, well, the affordability, the... Right. We look at it, what will the impact be on, on the population? Will it increase access to care? What will it do in terms of things like Medicaid? Uh, Medicaid is one of those things where I think we need to change the conversation. A lot of people in, Medicaid, uh, in America think about Medicaid as only the safety net for the very poor. There's not this understanding that Medicaid pays for 60% of the elderly who are in nursing homes. 60%. Uh, imagine having, having a relative, having your mother who, who needs to get in, in, into nursing home care and Medicaid's been cut back and your state has decided, well, we're going to put more into, into children's health or for the, uh, disability care. We're not going to be able to support that. That's not something that we as a society, as, as wealthiest nation in the world, should accept. There's, there's a mythology that we have the best health care system in the world. We should, but we don't. And we need to do what we can to get us there. So in, in, in terms of messaging, that's the kind of thing you would do, make sure that people understood that about Medicaid. That's right. And, and the other thing is, is, is we work to pull together uh, uh, unusual partners. We're partnering with the 4-H. We're partnering with the Y, with groups where people think, well, why are they involved in health care? Well, they're involved in health care because the Y is the, is the biggest provider of early childhood education. And early childhood is where so many of these issues begin. They're one of the biggest providers of diabetes education and high blood pressure education. The 4-H club, you know, one of the H's is health. So we want to work with them and, and work on rural health issues. There are all kinds of groups that are out there that are, are ripe to be partners for us that cut across the political spectrum and I think will help us de-escalate some of the heat around these issues. So when you look back in three, five years uh, at your time at the foundation, what one thing do you want people to think about Richard Be what Richard Besser brought to this organization? I want people to stop thinking that health is just about do I have a doctor? Health is about all these other things in the community. Do people have a safe place to live? Do their children have a school that's supporting their social and, and emotional needs as well as their learning needs? Um, and are we as a, as a country viewing all of the children as our children? 
and do we care as much about them as we care about our own? I have a feeling you're going to do really well because you do really well wherever you go and you're such a great communicator and I think that's a lesson for everybody too. It's, it's one of those things that people discount, that you can tell stories, that you can talk to people, that you can convince people if that's what you want to do. Thanks very much audience and thanks very much to Dr. Thank Richard you. Besser.